The final score, Philadelphia Union 2-1, Wrexham 1, got right this time. I'm Mark Griffiths from Wrexham AFC and Wrexham's historic US tour is now over and it's now all about preparing for MK Dons. This was, um, I'm speaking, having not been able to watch the Man United game, but uh, I think it's a fair assumption there was action in that match. This was the most sort of soporific, friendly-like of the friendly games, although it still had some strangeness to it. What Wrexham game doesn't have strangeness to it? A two hours, 29-minute half-time break that's a club record, I can assure you, um, due to a spectacular electrical storm. And, yeah, Wrexham come out of the game with more good minutes in their legs and with a week now to prepare for the real stuff. Wrexham started brightly. Third minute could have taken the lead. A cute free kick on the halfway line by James Jones, picking out Elliot Lee on the right-hand side. He rolled his man pulled the ball back, Ben Tozer with a good chance from 15 yards, pulled his shot, possibly going wide, but it took a deflection off a defender, ricocheted across the goal, and just wide of the right post could easily have found its way in. Now, Lee was interesting because he was playing up front initially with Sam Dolby in the absence, of course, of Paul Mullen. And he was lively, doesn't quite run the channels in the same way as Mullen, but he certainly was, was showing his ability in a higher up part of the pitch, something which Parkinson did try last season, but didn't really persevere with because it didn't quite click. In this match, he was looking lively and inventive. It was actually the Union who made the next chance, though, of Raffaello, who was consistently dangerous for them, driving in a shot from just outside the box, took a huge virtual 90-degree deflection off Andy Cannon, a brilliant save by Ben Foster. The ball was going to his left. It ricocheted. It was going to his right. He did superbly to claw it away. Sullivan got to the loose ball, but Foster completed the double save. The second part of the double save looks easy because Sullivan's got a very tight angle and basically just tries to drill it back. Foster is standing up at his near post and it just hits his chest. There's no sight of the goal. But the way Foster was able to quickly get up and get into that perfect position is what made the second save as impressive as the first. And then for much of the rest of the half, Wrexham dominated possession, looks pretty comfortable, weren't that many chances. Those that did come came from Wrexham set pieces. Toza hurling in a throw to the near post. O'Connell touching it on. Dolby attacking it really well from just outside the six-yard box, making decent contact, but stretching backwards slightly to control his head. I could only put it straight at the keeper. A couple of minutes later, a corner. O'Connor sweeping it in dangerously. O'Connell this time getting up at the far post, having done that classic Wrexham switch back, running beyond the back of the far post and back in. And he probably should have done better. A powerful header straight again at the goalkeeper. Wrexham continued to, to create from set plays and thought they'd taken the lead in the 39th minute. Toza putting in another long throw. At first it looked just textbook long throw tactics. O'Connell jumping at the near post, touching his arm with his head and being attacked and put into the net by Dolby. But... The referee blew for a foul by O'Connell at the near post. O'Connell looked flabbergasted. I've got to admit, on first look, I, I live, I was surprised. But looking at a playback, yeah, O'Connell leads with his arm and knocks a defender over. Maybe the defender goes down to emphasise the contacts, but I think he's entitled to do that. And the referee, who had a very good game, uh, I think got the decision right. It was only a three-minute respite anyway, because in the 42nd minute, Wrexham did take the lead. This time, it was a corner from the left-hand side. Lee sweeping the ball across and it hit coming off a defender, bouncing for Tom O'Connor, who typically, standing on the penalty spot, kept his calm, took a touch and drilled it with power into the net to give Wrexham the lead. It was a lucky lead for Wrexham, though, not because of the balance of play, but because it looked like a, a tough corner call on the Union. It was a Mendy breakaway down the left that set her up. His cross took a deflection... It looked to me like the goalkeeper uh, comfortably kept the ball from going behind for a corner, but the linesman thought otherwise. And so the union keeper, Rick, that's his last name, uh, not that familiar with him, uh, was, I think, hardly done, harshly done by there. Anyway, union 
didn't sit sit back after going behind and wait for the whistle because on the third minute by the time they got an equaliser, which was off the, against run of play, really. Ball played forwards. Now O'Connell initially did really well on the edge of the box, stretched, made an excellent interception from a pass, came forwards, but then tried a very cute pass 25 yards out from his own goal. I mean, don't get me wrong, you've got to back your talent. If you're a professional footballer, O'Connell did that, and he is a very good passer of the ball. And if it had worked, Wrexham would have been in a, a promising position to break in midfield. But he didn't get right. He gave it away. The ball was intercepted and fed straight back to the edge of the area. One of those passes that, that basically just put Toza in an impossible situation. Raphael was always going to get there first. Toza was committed and fouled him. And just stood there looking just a little bit shocked by what had just happened. Like, like somebody who just grabbed hold of a jar of gherkins in the supermarket and then seen them slip out of his hands and onto the floor. So Bemuse Toza didn't complain, couldn't complain, but he was sold down the river by O'Connell. Free kick given just outside the box. Ravello stepped up, drove it with power, looking for the right-hand side. Again, Cannon getting a block, but again, turning his back on it a little bit, and it ricochets past Foster like a bullet. In fact, Foster, who was completely wrong-footed, raised an arm up and nearly got a touch onto it. It would have been a remarkable save had he managed that. So the teams went in the half-time. Wrexham changed their entire 11 players. But then, like I said, that lightning storm struck. And quite frankly, that's always going to make it a peculiar situation, isn't it? Having a two and a half hour break, having to warm up again. That, I think, plus the 11 changes meant Wrexham actually got off to a very slow start and were lucky to still be level by the 50th minute. Union making two decent chances. Raffaello again picking the ball up, this time after Aaron Hayden had carelessly passed the ball across the face of his own penalty area straight to the striker. His shot was driven towards the top right corner. An excellent save by Mark Howard, who got across and pushed it around the post. A couple of minutes later, another opportunity. This time Vathquez with a run, driving forwards towards the edge area, 25 yards out, driving it in. Howard doing well this time to go down to his left and pushing the ball away to safety. Howard then set up a half chance, a great early clearance through the middle, over the top. Palmer got goal side of the last defender, but it was a very difficult first touch for him. He couldn't quite keep it close to him, and Lugenek was able to come across and make an excellent tackle on him. But by now, it was all a bit shapeless. Wrexham's path and rhythm wasn't really there. There were very few chances really being made by either side. Davis struck the ball cleanly from the edge of the D, but it was too straight and Rick was able to hold on to it comfortably enough. And the game sort of petered out. Until 10 minutes left, chances started to happen. Pierce, who'd been very lively since coming on around the hour mark as a substitute up front, turned Hayden rather too easily on the edge of the area left channel and drove a snapshot before Howard could set himself, which pinged away off the left post before anybody could really react. And then a minute later, there was another half chance. The ball pulled back to the edge of the area. Tucker hitting it first time, but again, too straight. An easy save for Howard. Wrexham, in the meantime, having not barely threatened really in the last half hour of the match, at the very last moment, in fact, literally the last touch of the game, should have won it. McAlinden on the right-hand side, cutting back and sweeping across at the far post. Hayden attacked it at the near post and couldn't quite reach it. Whether that put off young Aaron James or not, I don't know, but he had a pretty straightforward chance inside the six-yard box to head the ball past the stranded keeper. And it was hard to tell if he made any contact or not. He certainly didn't make enough contact to divert it into the gaping goal. And so the game ended one all, And another good run out for Wrexham. Interesting to see this tour... For off the pitch, obviously a glorious success. On the pitch, beyond the injury to Mullen, a glorious success. Those things happen, you, you can't help it. Um, interesting that nobody got a full 90 at any point during our pre-season, though. So, interesting, slightly unorthodox way to prepare. Well, exceptionally orthodox way to prepare for a season. But, yeah, not, not actually getting people through full 90. What was very interesting is Phil Parkinson maybe looking at the fact that we'll have extra games this season and looking to put us to start the season maybe slightly underdone so we can hit our rhythm a little later on and leave a bit of reserve in the engine tank. I don't know. But it's been an historic tour, a remarkable moment in Wrexham Football's club history. And, well, <laughs> the bizarre story just keeps going. With the final score 
of Philadelphia Union 2, 1, Wrexham 1. I'm Mark Griffiths from Wrexham AFC, and next Saturday we'll be able to bring you all the real stuff. Excited? I am. <laughs>